Good afternoon. This is the top of the Lennox volcano, a small extinct cinder cone volcano. Behind me you can see the snow-covered top of a much larger extinct volcano, Mount Humphreys. And I'm going to break here to talk about an anime. Kiki's Delivery Service. Kiki's Delivery Service is a 1989 theatrical anime film from director Hayao Miyazaki. It's almost a slice of life story targeted at teenage girls with enough depth and charm to still hold the attention of an adult. In a world not unlike the 1950s, Kiki is a little tween age girl who just happens to be a witch, just like her mom. As part of a rite of Wiccan passage, Kiki's 13th birthday is occasion for her to go off on her own for a year. So, on the night of the full moon, with her friends gathered to send her off, she hops on her mother's old broom and flies off. Kiki's traveling with her black cat, Gigi, a traditional witch's familiar who can speak with Kiki, even if most of it is sarcasm. Kiki eventually spots a city that she thinks would be nice to try and settle in, and she finally begins to fret about where she's going to live and how she's going to make a living for a year. Most of the town finds the idea of a witch flying around town on a broomstick to be a curiosity. Apparently, witches are rare, but not unheard of. A boy, Tombo, is really interested in flying, a trait he shares with a lot of other Miyazaki characters. Tombo thinks that Kiki's ability to fly is really cool, and he wants to be friends with her in the worst way. But Kiki is playing hard to get which is strange because she's so open and friendly with just about everyone else, but apparently she's shy with kids around her own age. Soon, Kiki meets Osono, a very pregnant woman who runs a small bakery in town, and together they hit on the idea for Kiki to use her flying as a delivery service. Osono throws in a room in the attic above the bakery, and soon Kiki has a home and a job. The rest of the movie tells the stories of Kiki's small adventures in her new home. In the course of those deliveries, she'll meet a few more new people, and some will become good friends. Ursula, a young artist, a few years Kiki's senior, who lives out in the countryside, will help the witch out, and then paint her portrait, and they'll become great friends. An elderly woman, who I don't think is even named in the anime, gets a helping hand from Kiki with some baking that she wants delivered, and they become good friends. A herring and pumpkin pie, a sweet and savory mix I don't think I'm going to try anytime soon. Oh, and that boy, Tombo, will be really persistent in his efforts to befriend Kiki, eventually winning her over by sheer stick to or stalking as it's called today. As I said at the start, the movie was scripted and directed by Hayao Miyazaki. Unlike his previous three movies, though, which were Miyazaki's own stories, Kiki is based on an established children's book. Kiki's delivery service is all about self-confidence and growing up. There's no big running plot through the whole movie, just a slice of normal life. Well, normal if you can fly on a broom. It's a charming collage of small stories full of likable characters. At the very end, Miyazaki adds a little excitement to close on a dramatic note, an episode that isn't in the original book, but provides a solid finale with a big finish. Based on the technology we see, such as the cars and Kiki's transistor radio, the movie seems set sometime resembling the 1950s or 60s, but with witches added. That's also reflected in the J-pop song in the opening, which apparently is actually from the 70s, but sounds like something from my youth in the 50s. It's also a very safe world, one where a 13-year-old girl can leave home with confidence. The city and countryside are modeled on Sweden, possibly because Miyazaki had previously visited Scandinavia a decade earlier when he was doing concept art in the hopes of making a Pippi Longstocking TV series. Miyazaki also gives us some rather nice air reviews of Kiki flying over the city and countryside, a reminder of how much the director enjoys the wonders of flight. There's also a slight feeling of nostalgia for the good old days, viewed through rose-colored glasses. Miyazaki's eyes always search for small details to tell his tales. 
For example, right at the start, Kiki is hurrying home. She exchanges a quick greeting with a neighbor she passes along the way, and she ducks through a hole in a picket fence to take a shortcut. It's those small touches, such as passing a neighbor and the hole in the fence, that add so much verisimilitude to the movie, bringing both the place and Kiki to life from the painted cell. And of course, Studio Ghibli's animation is first rate. The interior soundtrack is, like other Miyazaki films before it, by Joe Hisaishi. And it's likewise an excellent score, though perhaps not as memorable as his previous efforts on Miyazaki films. Anyway, Kiki's Delivery Service is a fine film for young kids, and it's entertaining enough that adults can watch along. I give it four and a half stars. Kiki was the first of the Ghibli titles that Disney released in the U.S. They did a reasonable dub, and it sounds pretty decent. Gigi, climb up and turn on the radio! Oh, great. Now I'm suddenly the flight attendant. The English dub also added some minor dialogue, mostly by Gigi, as in that quip just now, and a little by Kiki. It fills in some quiet spots in the movie, such as a little travelogue that's introduced when Kiki flies over a new city and takes in the sights. Apparently Americans can't just sightsee in silence. I admit I still prefer the Japanese soundtrack. Objectively, I think the English dub is fine, and if you plan to show this movie to its younger target audience, a dub is essential. So these days, that's what I watch. But my preference for the original Japanese soundtrack is from a decade of familiarity with my old Laserdisc version. Partly that's because I like the original opening J-pop theme song as a throwback, and partly it's because of Gigi's voice, which was higher pitched in the original Japanese. Disney re-released Kiki in 2010. As they did with their new release of Castle in the Sky, they dropped the original subtitles in favor of dub titles. I wish I understood that decision. Thanks for watching.